My name is Wandu Mba. I am the director of public health laboratory services in the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. We are involved in influenza surveillance and then having read some literatures to see that it was a respiratory kind of infection. So we quickly went and dusted uh, pre uh, pandemic influenza preparedness plan, okay, which we had, we had tried to finalize at the end of the year. So this became like a pointer because the surveillance for this influenza is the bedrock for COVID. Yeah, since we already have molecular capacity in place, it is just for us now to get the kit and then start practicing so that we'll not be taking on our ways, which we did real time and then had some kind of capacity trainings done. Then Africa CDC too supported by training four of our staff. You know, they went to, uh, they went to Dakar and have that training done. This is where it begins, the processes for the lab. Samples are received here. Every sample that comes here has to be received by the sample reception team. So all samples that come to the lab come through here. It's not just for COVID. We have received about 31 samples. So now we received our 21 samples from FCT already this morning. So we are receiving one again now. So we also took that more are also coming to We are dealing with a pandemic virus, even though it's BSL-2 level containment, we also would like to take extra precautions in the lab to do some, to work on the BSL-3 containment level. Okay, we have two glove boxes where the samples are inactivated. All samples that come to the lab have to come through here. Yeah, this is where inactivation of the sample is done. Uh, what it means is we render the viruses non-infective here, so whoever is handling them after here now doesn't have to worry about any of the samples infecting them or anything like that. And a lot of what we do here is chemical inactivation. We divided our staff. Some are coming in the night by five. Some are coming by eight. So when we come by eight, we start running the samples. And when the other set comes by five, they will take over the work. So we work 24 hours. Before the outbreak, we have been handling the master fever outbreak. So uh, the typical day will be the same thing I am doing, probably for a lesser number of samples. But um, I think the tide has changed, so most times I'm um, always here. For me, my, the way I see it, my work is my life. So I don't think it's affecting my personal life. I finish from I finish I finish from I finish by five and I go home. I come back the next day refreshed. So the system is structured in such a way that there is no fatigue and there is no pressure on any individual. After the sample is inactivated, it goes through extraction and the various rooms for PCR amplification down to reading the results. There is another lab downstairs where part of the work is also done, the research lab, and there are other machines so that we can increase capacity to test more samples on a daily basis. So the work is done both there and here. You see before, we are not doing night here. <laughs> yeah? But now, we are now, the place is now open to 24. Seven now. For instance, I was, I came here yesterday around 11 o'clock. I left here 6 o'clock in the morning. See me here again. I've been here since almost 27 o'clock. And this one too, I don't know whether it's still tomorrow. I'm leaving here. Depends on the the, the, the load of sardine, the, the, the volume, the number of sardine we have now. That one will not determine when we are going to sleep. It's highly for us is not easy, but we don't have choice because we keep pushing based on our director general's number that we must keep pushing. It's important for Nigerians to understand that we are operating within resource limited settings 
we wish that we had everything that we needed but the reality is that we don't have everything that we need to respond to this outbreak so we need to make optimal use of whatever resources we have and it's important for Nigerians to do this with us you can't be bugging up the phone lines and holding it up for people who actually need to call or who need to get through every minute we spend going to investigate a case that is not really a case keeps us from investigating a real case and these are part of the things that cause delays in the system so do your part NCDC does their part the Federal Ministry of Health does their part all of us as individuals do our, do our part religious organizations do their part C citizens do their part private companies do their part everybody does their part it really is not an NCDC response it's not a Federal Ministry of Health response it is an all of society response so everybody so either you're isolating or following the guidelines or you're spreading the correct information or you're act actually a frontline health worker who is helping to respond directly to the outbreak whichever way all of us are responsible and we need to take responsibility.